You're listening to Oh My Health, There Is Hope podcast. When your heart is aching and your world is shaking, don't give up. No, no, don't give up. Hello and welcome to Oh My Health, There Is Hope, the podcast. I'm your host, Jana Short, and today I'm here with Joanna Abumitri. Joanna is the founder of Am I saying this right? Kilani? Kilani. Kilani. Yes. A Polynesian inspired holistic wellness program descending from a royal family in Samoa. And I know I say that wrong, but I know the Americans know what I'm talking about. (laughs) It's good. It's good. (laughs) It's like in Africa, they say zebra instead of zebra. And I know I'm saying it right here. (laughs) It's in in, on Ireland, we say Samoa. 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 Oh, I like that much better. Yes, yes. Um, her grandfather was um, the paramount chief of a region of the island with deep connection to her ancestors. Her mission is to spread the spirit of Kilani as a vessel. I am loving everything you do. She is a mother of three inspiring girls, a three-time published wellness author, and is currently working on her fourth book. She is registered holistic nutritionist, Pilates instructor, and inspired experienced public presenter, aspiring singer, songwriter, and world traveler. She has also been featured on several media outlets, including CTV News, CBC, National News, and the Global News. And I have been dying for this interview, so I am so excited you're here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jana. I'm so grateful to be here and honored. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm literally honored to have you. Like I'm, I'm so jazzed. I've been reading all of her stuff and I'm kind of becoming a super stalker fan. So yay. <laughs> well, that's the feeling is mutual. I'm a super stalker fan of yours. So yay, mutual. <laughs> well, that cancels it out. So we're not stalkers now. So yay. Yes. <laughs> One of the first things we ask all of our guests is to share a story of hope. So do you want to share a story of hope with us today? I would love to. Thank you. Uh, so my biggest thing that I've actually come through, not over, is in this past year, actually, and that was what inspired my third book, My Breakup with the Scale. So I have had a lifetime of eating disorders, and they were pretty bad. And then I had a few bouts of depression that were pretty bad as well. And just recently, I've come through all of those things. And obviously, we're always a work in progress. And obviously, we can always do better. But I'm really in the most peaceful, I want to say, place that I've ever been in my life. And the the um, epiphanies and it all catapulted actually in 2020 of last year. So that's basically my the, the short version of my story of hope. I call it the breakup with a scale, how I ended the 30 year relationship. So that's that's the biggest thing that I can say right now. By the way, I love that you're saying that it was a relationship with the scale because it is, and I'm constantly saying to people, then don't let a number define who you are or dictate what you can and cannot do or how you feel about yourself. Yes, a hundred percent. I absolutely, absolutely agree with that. And I knew that intellectually my entire life. However, it wasn't powerful enough for me to change my behavior because I really wanted the validation from the scale. And I believed, well, if the scale wasn't telling me I'm worthy, how would I know that I'm worthy? So it took me, it took me a while to figure that out, but I have, so I'm really happy about that. I love that message. I want to know all about Alofa. Am I saying it right? Alofa. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. I want to know what it is. Why is everyone talking about it? What is it doing for the world? I would love to talk about it. It's my favorite thing to talk about. And actually my social media hashtag is hashtag spread Alofa. And that's, you know, my second book that I wrote. And so basically what it is, Alofa is love in my Samoan ancestral language. So it's not fairy tale or Hollywood love, which there's nothing wrong with those things at all. It is based on the reverence that my ancestors have for connection to nature, to humanity, to community, and to our higher selves. So I firmly believe that a lot of dis-ease that we have on our planet in the world is for lack of connection. And it's not only connection between human to human, uh, but also connection to the planet, connection to nature, understanding that we're connected to nature, uh, but also being connected to our higher self. And I know that that may sound like 
maybe a, a, a woo woo kind of concept, but it gets so noisy in the world sometimes. And I always compare myself to a radio station, right? So it's important for us, I believe, to tune into the higher self. And to be able to do that, we have to tune out or dial down the outside noise from media, from toxic conversations, from toxic relationships, whatever it is, anything that gets in the way of that. So when you're connecting to your higher self, when you're getting that, that peace and you can really listen to yourself. And I was just thinking this morning that there's so much noise in the world. And I think that sometimes we might get purposely addicted to the noise in an effort to lock out the truth because the truth can be painful sometimes. So anyway, Alofa is based on that. It's based on the unconditional love, self-compassion, compassion for others without any expectation of anything in return. And so I've used that whole concept and that's how I've modeled my entire purpose in life, um, my entire career, my business, the way that I deal with my daughters and everybody that I interact with. So that's basically what Alofa is. <laughs> By the way, I think that is beautiful. And when you're talking about that, it immediately brings to mind something really prevalent that's going on in the world now. Let's talk about social media and let's not even talk about what other people are saying to us. How much time are we spending to see how many hearts we got, our thumbs up to validate us or what our message was? And honestly, I got to tell you, that's the outside noise. I know when I put something out there, it came from my heart. It was a message that I was inspired to put out there. And whether I got a million likes or not one like, I knew that I was living in that right place. And we're validating ourselves based on people we don't even know who's never even met us, giving us those likes, those touches. I definitely agree with that. And actually, you know, I've been you know, I call it my wellness village of all the people that have, you know, helped me out in the past. I mean, I've had psycho, I've had a psychotherapist, a therapist, a distance healer, a, um, a, I have a brain retraining coach, everybody under the sun. And one of the practitioners said to me one time a few years ago, as I was going through one of my bouts of depression, she goes, she goes, you know, you're a validation addict. And I said, what? She goes, I had, I had no idea. I'm like, I didn't know that that could be an addiction. She goes, yeah, you're addicted to people telling you affirming things that you should be affirming to yourself. And so, as you said, social media is definitely a trigger for that. And unfortunately, it's modeled that way. The algorithms are pointed everything to the things that we, uh, we believe are good for us. And, and I always say, just because something feels good, it isn't necessarily good for you. So, you know, the multi-billion dollar industries are trying to tap into all our, you know, neurochemicals, making us feel this and making us feel that and making us feel that. And unfortunately, letting us also know that all those things also equal happiness. And as you and I both know, we're both in this world, they absolutely do not. But the more you're in it, the more it's difficult to tune that out. So it is important to take a step away. I, I believe in the value of social media. That's how you know you and I connected. And just like everything, there's there's positive and less than positive. So use wisely. It can be a great tool. However, it can also be very, very dangerous. My three kids are not on social media and people are shocked by that because one is gonna be 18, well, one's 17, the other is 14 and the other one is six. And that's a choice that I've made with my respect to everybody else. But as long as I can keep them away from all of these things, which as time progresses are purposely created and programmed to trigger, especially these little developing brains. So I definitely agree with you. I think you said that beautifully, and it's true. We go to, to social media, our friends, our family for validation, and that's sad. Like if they're not saying you're beautiful, you're smart, you're intelligent, you're kind, you're, you know, you're generous, you're graceful. Why are we just not looking in the mirror and saying those things to ourselves? Like our opinion, what we're, what the story we're telling ourselves is really the only story that matters. I definitely agree with that. And, and the funny thing is, I think that on some intellectual level, and I'll speak for myself, not everybody else, 
you know, I, I opened a studio and I opened my business back in 2007 and our logo was health and happiness from the inside out. So I knew it, John, I knew it intellectually, but I wasn't really applying it. So knowledge and acknowledgement is, is, is definitely a great step, but then taking action is another important step. So just knowing, oh yeah, I know everything comes from the inside. What exactly does that mean? That means these are the things that you need to do. These are the practices that you need to do. This isn't a flip, a switch that you just flip. And that's why we both know that there's certain things that you have to practice until it becomes something that's second nature. For me, affirmations and gratitude practice are, are second nature to me. It's the first thing I do when I wake up. It's the last thing I do before I go to sleep. But that didn't just suddenly happen. That's something that I had to be very mindful and conscious of. So th those things are really important. And it's really important for us to educate the generations to come about that because otherwise it's dangerous. It's a dangerous world <laughs> that they are growing up into. It's scary. It is very scary. Let's, I want to just talk a little bit about what you just brought up, affirmations and how those work. Because I hear a lot of people saying, oh, that's woo-woo-y. And uh, that, you know, like that seems silly. And it, I got to tell you, I was that person years ago and it was uncomfortable at first. But what I learned in going back to school is the power of our brain. It yes. doesn't know that we don't believe it, yes. <laughs> right? It doesn't yes. know that us getting to our goal, making a dream happen, doing something yes. we, we are inspired to do hasn't happened or isn't going to happen like we yes. might be thinking. Yeah. I, I, I definitely agree with that. And I get, I get all sides of it, you know? Uh, so what are, I love integrating everything. I love the integration of practices. I love integrative medicine. I love integrative practices. And I love it when science is able to back up the woo woo. <laughs> I love it. You know what I mean? When science is like, Hey, so, you know, all those things they were telling you to do, that's why. And, you know, when I, I, I teach a guided meditation practice and, you know, I tell my, my clients that when you close your eyes and you take your, your, yourself on a journey and you're on a beach or whatever it is, and you're feeling happy in your mind, in your brain, you are there, you're actually there. The feelings of joy are real. That visualization is real. We're creating, either we're connecting to an old neural pathway or we're creating new neural pathways. So every time we're looking in the mirror or writing it down, I am strong, I am perfect, I'm whole, I am complete, I am enough. Eventually, as you're writing it down, first of all, writing it down with our hand, you know, is important. Every single time that's happening, you're wiring and firing and wiring and firing. And the thing is, is that, you know, we, nature and nurture have created this uh, melting pot of a whole bunch of stuff in our lives, things that we can control and things we can't. And there's all these little neural pathways that have been created, but sometimes a neural pathway when it's uh, reinforced over and over again. So I am not enough, I am, I'm ugly, I am whatever it is, that gets bigger and bigger and turns into a super highway. So the problem is even if one day you and I say, I am enough, and then you're done, it's just like this little thing, well, your brain is gonna automatically go back to the super highway. That's, how, that's what it knows, that's where the car is gonna go. But if we keep on practicing that, then eventually that supersedes that other one. And so that makes sense to me. And you know, the concept, you know, a lot of people go, well, I'm just gonna stare at myself and say, I'm worthy, I'm beautiful, I'm enough. If you do, you do feel ridiculous, of course, because if it's something that you haven't done, it's going to seem odd, first of all, that you're talking to yourself. And second of all, that it's something completely, you know, the, something that may not make sense to you, but it does and it works and it's amazing and it's valuable. So for sure. <laughs> One of the questions I'm going to ask you was asked to me by one of my clients, like uh, we're doing affirmations, we're doing the visualization. And one of the things she said in tears one day to me was, why is it so easy to believe all the negative stuff? Why do I have to hear that negative thing? Someone could say your butt's huge or, oh my gosh, you look awful. And all of a sudden this is huge, but they can say a million times to her, she's beautiful. And it takes forever for that to be received. Yeah, no, that's a good question. And I can't say that that's ever been asked to me, but I think that that's just, again, going back to those neural pathways that, that we just keep on. That's the thing that we focus on. And that's, we focus on all the, 
the things that we're doing wrong. We're focusing on the guilt and we're focusing on the shame. And, you know, as humans by nature, uh, we have a fear of disconnection and we have a fear of being shunned by society, by our community, by our village. And so we, you know, we, you and I both know we can choose love and we can choose fear, but oftentimes the, the fear road is, is, is there and that's the one that we choose. And so if you're living constantly, which is what I used to do, if I go into a, a public setting, the first thing that I would think is, are people going to laugh at me? Are people going to whatever? Because that's 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 a valid fear. That's a valid fear. That, that's why stage fright is one of the biggest fears on our planet is because we have a fear of being shunned by our community. And so that's if that's constantly on your mind and ingrained, then obviously that's that's the highway that you're going to go into more so than that other one, which is a practice that we have to do on our own. And I don't know that we're even just trying to think I don't know that we're actually ever taught that you know mm -hmm. I teach it to my daughters but that's not something that we're taught we're just taught all the things that we shouldn't do be a certain way I said that to my daughters yesterday be a certain that's what they tell us be a certain way talk a certain way dress a certain way act a certain way do like do be like this do do this do that and so that's constantly like what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing versus the inside work that we should be doing there's much less of a focus on that I believe so I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about some of the things that you teach in Alofa that will definitely start making changes in our lives. Cause we're going to, at the end of the um, podcast, we're going to put all the ways that they can connect with you, grab books, grab information and start participating. But what are some of the key things that they could, little steps they could start taking to moving yes. in that direction? Absolutely. So Kilani, there's three major bullet points that we um, that we speak of, which is movement, community, and connection. So we, we discuss connection, right? So Kilani as a program uh, basically consists of meditations and movement practices. So in our movement practices, the three elements are all based on connection to um, the body, to nature and our higher self. So we've got ocean flow, we've got um, island journey, and we've got a guided meditation. Move, just move. <laughs> it's really as simple as that. If anyone's watching or listening, just move. Again, going back to what society tells us is to move a certain way and to be a certain way and to, to dance. A certain, this is how dancing should look. And this is how a step class should look. And all those things definitely have their place. I've been in the industry for about 20 years and definitely there's value in all those disciplines. They're very linear and they're done so in a certain way. However, for anyone listening, all our emotions are stored in our body. It's just a fact. And I have a, um, a friend in, I think he's in, he's in Switzerland and he's, this is his specialty. And he was talking about trauma and he says trauma with his beautiful Swiss accent, which I'm not gonna say, right? I just love it. So trauma is stored all through the body. Anything that's ever happened to you. And I believe that we've all experienced grief and we've all experienced trauma. It is stored in your body. And there's only three ways that trauma can be released. One, shock therapy two, hypnosis, and three, movement. So unless you've got a shock therapy machine in your house or a, hyp a hypnotist on, on call, on speed dial, which is, is great if you do, um, why not do the thing that you can do every single day? Every single day, Jenna, I put on music and I move. Now, very specific to my movement disciplines is I call it ocean flow because, you know, and again, over time with the industrialization of, of society, things have become very linear. Dance has become very linear. Uh, and, and we've lost a little bit, or maybe we've moved away from, I'm not gonna say lost, we've moved away from flow. And you know, Bruce Lee's uh, quote, and I always forget that, is um, be like water, flow like water. Water takes the shape of, if it goes into a jar, it takes the shape of a jar. If it goes into a bowl, it takes the shape of a bowl. That's how we should be living in life, in harmony, not trying to fight against something, not trying to even balance. I don't firmly believe in balance. I think we're always gonna be hit with things. So that goes, that holds true of our body. So trying to create flow in your body 
in a way that works with your body. So you just turn on music and you just flow and move. And especially in the hip area, which is a really main area that we focus on, uh, that is where a lot of our trauma, our emotions, they get stuck there. So when, you know, I always, I'm always I'm doing this. If everyone's listening and not watching me, I'm doing all these windy movements. Ever since I was younger, I was always winding and I love the ocean. Everything needs to flow in our body. Everything needs to flow. And when there's anything that's blocked, that's when it gathers up and becomes stagnant. That's when we have dis-ease in our body. So if there's anything that you can do right now um, to create that flow, which is exactly what we do. I just, I have all these movements that I've created or adapted from different practices. And basically what we do is just try to flow through them. And as you're doing that, you know, if anybody knows about the chakras, it's the seven energy centers where we're moving up and we're moving down and we're flowing all around and you help to release those out because if you don't they're just gonna get stuck there and you're not even gonna know it until one day somebody drops a tissue the wrong way and you get upset and you're they're like what just happened to you you have all these wow i just dropped a tissue but but they get stored and then they get stuck so definitely um that kind of movement and then we connect to nature now what's the big deal about nature i mean it's storytelling First of all, we are all connected to nature, and I and I said this on Earth Day, I think to I don't I don't remember some somewhere around Earth Day I was saying for me my intention is my wish and my wish isn't just that people recycle more or whatever is that they realize that we're actually all connected to nature. If you have that understanding that you know you don't have to say you know Father Sky and Mother Earth whatever way you want to look at it, if you realize that we're all this beautiful ecosystem and we're all living together, then it'll just be such a such a powerful thing so you know I have this coconut tree next to me and my friend is a she is she has a doctorate in in happiness she is a happiness expert and she was talking about studies that that show that even you know having nature pictures of nature around are important for your well-being studies show that even if you have a picture of a plant and you're doing a test then you're going to be more successful in that test than someone that doesn't but then when you're visualizing nature what happens first of all is that you quiet down the monkey brain which is what they call it i have a tendency towards anxiety because i i i worry about my kids and I worry about the diseases and I worry about all these kinds of stuff. And how do I quiet that anxiety and that monkey brain is by visualizing nature. And so, you know, we both know that the brain often when it stresses in sympathetic mode, how do we switch it over to parasympathetic mode? Some people say, I can't just sit down and meditate. Very cool. That's okay. We're going to go on a journey together. We're going to visualize that we're washing our faces from the water at the waterfall. We're going to visualize the ocean in front of us. We're going to visualize the sun in the sky. The movements help to connect you there. The colors that you visualize have psychological benefits. And just taking yourself there on that journey gives your poor, anxious, overstressed, overthinking brain, just a little bit of a break enough so that when you come back to the world, you're not escaping, you're coming back and just seeing in a different light. So that's the second element. And the first element is the, the guided meditation where we sit down, we do the affirmations and, and we go on again, just little journeys together and then we breathe. So anybody listening, just move and breathe. <laughs> Those are the two main practices or the, well, yeah, movement and breathing are the, the, the main practices that I advise you to do right now. <laughs> By the way, I think that's beautiful. And how hard is that? It's something our bodies are meant to do. Like, let's just yeah. let them do what they're supposed to be doing. Absolutely. Yes. I love it. I, I am so grateful that you came on today. I think you shared so many incredible points and I I'm inspired by you. We're going to put all of your information in the show notes so people can connect with you. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I am so grateful for being here. Thank you so much for creating this beautiful platform to make a positive impact in people's lives and make them realize that there is hope. Sometimes it can seem or feel hopeless, but there is hope. And by sharing our own stories, we can just you know let everybody know 
it's possible. Hope is possible. Or there is a, there's definitely a light at the end. So thank there you so much. There definitely is. Thank you so much for sharing. Thanks for listening to the Oh My Health There Is Hope podcast. Make sure to visit Jana's website, bestholisticlife.com, where you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Google Play, or listen there so you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you simply tell a friend about the show, that'll help too. Let's change the world together, one health expert at a time. Looking forward to seeing you next time.